Uh, right now, we're going to take it over to Fempreneur Network, Cheryl Calhoun. Cheryl, hello. Hi, How's it Chuck. Nice to see you. Good to Who'd see you. Who'd you bring with us today? Today, I have Terry Sharon. She's hello, a Terry. She's a Fempreneur. And um, she is, she has a kind of, well, she has a very interesting background. But uh, I met Terry um, maybe a year ago and in, at a networking event, maybe a couple years ago, actually. And, um, you know, she, I've learned so much about her, uh, what she does at each event that she's at, and she tells a little bit more about her background and history. So I, I, I just thought, she needs to be on Chuck's show. Well, wait, yeah. do, do I hear you right? You have a loss prevention company? Uh, no, I, well, I have a protection company in the in regards to fraud. Okay. So for business owners, I help business owners understand the gaps that they may have that opens the door for any type of fraud and internal external theft. Internal and external. So yes. let, let's talk about the internal a little bit. Yes. Uh, is, that, is, that, is that a bigger percentage than the external? Very much so. Eey. Very okay. much so. In mm. fact, most business owners don't realize that you know, 77% of most fraud that happens for a business owner is from their employees. Do you know that when I was growing up, my parents owned a restaurant, and, and my father could never understand how the bartender's kids went to private school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> there you go, right there. Now, what, 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 what types of things are people doing? So there's everything from just flat out stealing from a company all the way through to some highly organized uh, impacts to companies with regards to even mirroring a company or posing as a business owner. Tell, tell me about mirroring. That's, yes. That sounds really devious. It is. Mm. So um, one tactic for criminals is that they will rent a, a room right next to or a building right next to an existing company, usually some type of a company that involves trucking or construction, and they pose exactly, hence the word mirror, they pose exactly like the true company, and they're able to get a whole bunch of supplies in, you know, by Hopefully which, checks in the mail checks in the mail okay. the whole nine yards and they do this for about 30 days and then they pick up and disappear and it is the true business owner's company that is left receiving within the next following 30 days all the bills wow. from all the different orders that the company, the mirror. That company. can kind of be done in-house too, right? You yes. steal the letterhead, steal the, you know, start uh, directing things your way. Yes, routing, exactly. Rout, routing numbers and stuff. Exactly. And that's business identity theft, but most people are not really aware of what business identity theft is. Terry has an a interesting background. Tell, tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. Well, uh, just briefly, I started at the tender age of 13 working in law enforcement. And How did you start at 13? Happy you asked. Right along. So we had, no, we had a summer youth program, and a bunch of law enforcement agencies hired youth to come in and not only learn about law enforcement and the operations, but we collected and reported the FBI stats for that wow. department. Wow. So that was a summer internship program. How interesting. Program. It was because yeah. I was able to see firsthand what a passion within me I didn't realize I had, which was human behavior and specifically criminal human behavior. Wow. Opened your eyes Opened quite a bit. Opened my huh? eyes. Opened my eyes. So They're then, 13 years old. Wow. Yeah. So Billy then, started his career at 13 too. Yeah, we're not that <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, so you, you get to do that. How, how how were you chosen to do that? Because I mean, not every kid can we do that. We just applied. My mother really? knew of the program and wow. sent did, my brother. Did she know that you were interested in it already? Had no clue. Wow. Had no clue. Stumbled upon a career path yes. at 13. Yes. Wow. Now, what did you do after that? So I then you know, got educated and worked different jobs from the DA's office and then the police department. And then I got my master's degree in criminology. And then I uh, started teaching at Fresno State and then also our police academy and then worked in the field as a fraud criminal investigator. Wow. Yeah. For, for the Fresno Police Department? For private organization. Private wow. organization. This, I bet when you, when you ran into her, you were, you, you're like me, just, oh my gosh. Well, you know, and here's the thing. Uh, I don't know why any person, well, any person who doesn't have uh, identity a theft uh, protection for themselves personally or in their business, I, I don't get it. Because even myself, and I do have it, uh, 
actually through Terry, is in my, my own account with uh, Bank of America has been um, attacked on two occasions where I've had to have cards changed and all of that, you know. So it's, it's rampant. It's happening every day. If you think it's not going to happen to you, then you're, you know, you're not thinking straight, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And in part, you know, when you're looking at consumer identity theft, that's one thing. But when you're looking at its bigger, ugly brother, which is business identity theft, we, this is a 21st century crime with business owners with an antiquated mindset behind what really could happen. Because what we know is, you know, $40,000 is the average loss for a business owner. Entrepreneurs are 15% more impacted than even a regular consumer. And the cost to kind of clean up that whole aspect of business identity theft is extensive very extensive because you have to hire the lawyers. You know, the banking system doesn't necessarily have the proper protections for a business banking account. So it can be quite costly if you want to, you know, what I call put your head in the sand and kind of not realize that this could happen to you. You know, a lot of people have it personally. What, what about for your business? What, what do you do differently? So for your business, the first thing that you really need to do is separate your personal life from your business life. And when we're looking at identity theft, those are called either personal identifiers or business identifiers. You really need to separate that. You need to operate under either a corporation, S-Corp, C-Corp, LLC, or an EIN number. Don't use your personal social security number, for example. Once you keep those clear lines separated, then your second step is understand what bank you're using, its own fraud uh, prevention, um, departments and requirements as a business account because under the the business accounts for banking is covered under the uniform commercial code which is, which is not the same protections as a regular consumer so um, we, we, we see this happening big big companies Target Home Depot absolutely. these, these kind of places Can, how, how do you how do you protect yourself from that? So a, a, a fraudster, and in particular, someone who's utilizing the internet, utilizing malware, these uh, very specific attacks can happen to both small and large companies. No one's really immune from it. Mm -hmm. So as a business owner, you want to make sure that you have the best of the best, the malware, the antivirus, the encryption codes. From the, You need to protect yourself from those data breaches because it is data breaches that can lead not only your particular uh, client base information to be exposed, but then it also can expose you as a business owner to the business identity theft side. It's all, it's all stuff that seemed just a short time ago to be uh, like a science fiction movie, it but does. you know, th science fiction thriller or something, but now it's just so real. And they prey on women because? Yes. Because so they women shop a lot. Well, women are still perceived, though, <laughs> in the world of business, women are still perceived as the weaker of the two, where, you know, we run our business emotionally, or we're just not on top of our filings for our, you know, um, our, our state, you know, filing requirements for a business owner. There's all these perceived notions still about women and women in business. And that's not happening on our watch. No, it's yeah, not, not. Not the Fempreneur Network. No. Is it? No. <laughs> no, no. Uh, how, many, how many members now? We have well over 200, 300 people. Uh, but but, but the, the net network stretches out to. Oh my gosh, the network stretches yes. out thousands, millions uh, of women. Yes, absolutely. And we're going to be um, in uh, Vegas uh, very soon at a very large. Um, event and then uh, we have a very large event coming up at Tanaya Lodge in September. Nice. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll be back to talk about that. Yes, I will. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Always, it's always so good to see good you, Cheryl. Thanks for coming you. on. Yes. Okay. Uh, Fanpreneur Network, if you ladies out there want to join, get a hold of Cheryl Calhoun. You will not regret it. Hey, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back on the buzz. Stick around.